Hi, it's Michael from DNA here, and in the next few minutes, you're going to learn how you can organize your recordings using the software that comes with most digital recorders made by Olympus, and that software is called Olympus Sonority. Now, although we're going to be looking at a specific piece of software, this video is very much about the strategy of organizing recordings that you made of lectures. Now, students that I've worked with in relation to specific learning differences, such as dyslexia or dyspraxia, have sometimes mentioned that managing audio recordings and electronic filing in general has sometimes seemed a bit overwhelming if they haven't had a system in place. This video aims to explain why it's really important to archive and organize your lecture recordings pretty much as soon as you get back from the lecture so that this technology, which is going to support you in a lecture, doesn't become a barrier to your learning. When you first connect your digital recorder to your computer and open Olympus Sonority, you should find that we've got two windows on the left-hand side of the screen. At the bottom left, these folders are on your digital recorder, and at the top, these folders are on your computer. So I made a recording earlier on my digital recorder in folder A, I'm just going to click on that and we can see a recording in the central pane in Olympus Sonority here. Now to get this onto your computer there's a number of ways you could do this. You could right click on folder A and choose download folder and everything that is in folder A would go to folder A on your computer. Alternatively you could go up to device at the top of the screen and choose one of these options. See there's options here for downloading folders or for downloading everything or you can quite simply click on the file and notice I've got folder A on my recorder selected so this is a file on my recorder and just simply drag it to the folder that you want it to go to on your computer. Now it's a very small file so it's done it automatically just note that when I click on folder A here it looks exactly the same because now there's a duplicate so if I click on folder A on my recorder we can see the same file there. Personally I would suggest that you use your digital recorder simply as a capture device. You record your lecture, then you use one of these methods to copy it over to your computer, then you scrub the recorder clean. So with folder A on my recorder selected, I'm now going to right click on this file and delete it. Yep, that's fine, I'm going to delete this. And now if I click back on folder A on my computer, we can see the file is still there. And now that we've got the file onto your computer, you'll notice that it's happily sitting in folder A in the corner. The difference between these folders and the ones on your recorder is that the ones on your computer, you can make folders inside folders. So for instance, we can right click on folder A, create a new folder. I'm going to call this uh, year one. So. And what you should notice is now this little plus symbol has appeared next to this folder. And if I click on it, we get our year one folder. And then inside that, I'm going to create another folder again and call this uh, semester one. And you get the idea. You can build folders within folders. Inside semester one, you might want a series of folders identifying specific modules that you're working on. This filing process will save you huge amounts of time when you're trying to find your lecture recordings later on. And now to file the recording that we made earlier, I can click back on the top level folder, folder A. Here's our recording that we've made, and I can just drag it into semester one. So first of all, we get our recording into the right folder. Then you'll want to rename it, and to rename this file, you can right click, and you can choose properties on this menu. So I'm gonna give this a new title, I'm going to call this uh, using my recorder. I've just typed over the top of the text in this box here. And finally, there's quite a nice tool that you can use called comment. Now, we've got a comment field here on the right hand side. And you can either right click on the file and choose edit comment down at the bottom here. Or there's an icon for this function. You can have the file selected and you choose the pencil with the little speech mark next to it. Now I think it's a good idea to add a comment and I would always put in the surname of the lecturer and the reason for that is once you've added in your lecturer name it appears in your file and if I had a number of different mp3s here in this list if I clicked on this bar at the top you'll see this little triangle goes upside down 
that would put it in alphabetical order or reverse alphabetical order. So it's just another field that you can use to file and organize your lectures. Now I can't stress enough how important it is to do this process as soon as you get back from the lecture. Let's just compare it to a situation where perhaps you didn't do this straight away and you've got 10 files on your recorder or with names like DM670001 or 002 and you were finding it difficult to marry these files up against the different lectures and then you've got to file them and organize them. Just imagine you've got an exam coming up and you're under pressure searching for the right lecture. That's really the last thing that you want to be worrying about when you have an exam deadline looming. So make sure you get your filing done straight away and you'll have a much better experience of using this software and technology to support your experience of note taking in lectures.